welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today, well, both Mark and I would like to pay tribute to an extraordinary young man um, uh, who was taken from the world far too young. We're going to talk about Jack Lance, a name I know will be familiar to many of you. I, I never knew Jack, um, but I knew of his puzzles, and I have to say I've spent the last few days learning more about Jack and what a guy this was. Um, it's it's a tragedy. He died at the age of 25 um, and many of you reached out to us. So I want to particularly thank um, the puzzle creator David Miller, um, Jack's family who've encouraged us uh, to talk about Jack today and um, also Jacob Cohen who has an amazing repository, who wrote a beautiful tribute to Jack, um, which, which I, if I remember, I will certainly link under this video and encourage you to visit. Um, and, and the puzzle we're going to be doing today in today's video, well, I'm going to be doing this puzzle on screen, which is uh, it's called Build Your Own Star Battle. Uh, and this, the reason I'm going to do this one, um, we, we did have a Sudoku suggested as well that, we, that, that for, for Jack and, and uh, Mark's going to have a look at that. And the reason I'm doing the star battle is that as, as we sort of got to know more and more about Jack, this puzzle kept on coming up as being a puzzle that just blew everyone's minds. So we thought we would try, or I would try and solve um, perhaps, perhaps Jack's most famous and well-known puzzle. So it's a build your own star battle puzzle. I love star battle puzzles and that's what I'm going to be attempting in today's video. After we've talked a bit about this this extraordinary young man, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I made, um, I'll show you what I did. I went uh, and found some of Jack's, um, Jack's Twitter and it's just extraordinary. Uh, you know, every few days Jack would post something that was just unbelievably witty and clever. Um, now, Jack's real name was Zachary Polanski, and you can see here, and I think this gives a little bit of an insight into Jack's mind. He, he had an incredibly clever visual imagination. So you can see Jack Lance being picked out of Zachary Polanski there. Um, but yeah, if we just go down, I, I mean, I just picked some of these out that caught my eye, but there are hundreds of these, hundreds of just extraordinary things. Finances are a lot like tic-tac-toe. One either has excess or O's. Now, if you, if you say excess, excess as X's, one either has X's or O's. I mean, that is just, that's just brilliant. One does either have excess or O's in the world of finance and in tic-tac-toe, X's and O's obviously make up the game. Look at this anagram. An eye-patched pirate is an anagram of the paired eye captain. And then Jack adds, oh wait, never mind. The first one has one eye and the second eye has two. And of course, referring to the letters. But when you read about it, <laughs> the, the paired eye captain has two eyes and the eye-patched pirate has only one. I mean, I mean, what a cryptic crossword setter Jack would have been, I and mean, maybe was, I don't know. I, I love this one, which is sort of a pithy 29 letters, comma, 12 unique. That was the entire tweet. And yet you read it. And of course, it uses 29 letters and it uses only 12 unique letters. I mean, it's just... Ah, oh, it's just chef's kiss, isn't it? It's just brilliant. I, I mean, I'm a fan of The Simpsons. And Jack wrote, Mo and Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons are both Bart Enders. And of course, if you move that hyphen slightly, we've got a bar, a bartender rather than a Bart Ender. But that's, I mean, that's lovely. This anagram, do money calculations well. Anagrams to economically sound wallet. I mean... I mean, some of you, I think this will blow your minds. I mean, if you're a computer programmer, um, I'm not a good enough computer programmer. I'm not a computer programmer at all. But even with my elementary knowledge of computer programming, I thought this was just absolutely extraordinary that apparently the letters Fibonacci rabbits are an anagram of this code that Jack wrote, which calculates the Fibonacci numbers. I mean, 
jaw dropped. And then this logic puzzle at the end um, that some of you might like to have a go at. But this, this has a solution. There are five houses of different prices and heights. The house that's taller than the house that's more expensive than the house that's shorter than the house that's cheaper than the house that's blue is red. And that's it. Everything can be deduced from that. I mean, this 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 guy was clearly an, just an... I mean, I wish I'd met him. I really do. I think he and I would have sat in the corner at a party and I would have... I would have listened and learned um, just one. Oh, there was another there was another visual thing that I wanted to share with you, actually. Let me find that because I, I did want to share it. This is a, it's slightly different, but you can see it sort of spells macro. And then if you play it. There's the micro is revealed. So the micro and the macro are sort of superimposed on each other and you can see you can see it once you, once your brain gets used to looking for it but it's a it's a beautiful bit of design it reminds me of sort of ambigrams um now what else what else did i want to tell you about um it's hard doing videos like this because i find it emotional goodness only knows what it must be like if you knew jack um, I, I would like to actually recommend anybody who did know Jack or anyone who'd like to donations in his memory um, should be made to the MIT mystery hunt um, which I'm sure many of you do um, I think that is uh, well, it's, it's, a, it's a worthy worthy cause for donations um, anyway perhaps perhaps I should move on to other matters before I get emotional um, and yeah we'll do we'll do some birthdays we'll do some birthdays so we're going to change change tack um brody and girlfriend maddie have the same birthday i think they're both in arizona i know brody's in arizona and turns 21 today but the two of them have the same birthday so happy birthday to the pair of you i hope you have a great day today james has turned 26 and i know this because your cousin alex wrote to us um, and I think I meant to say have a gowder day, James. So have a gowder day. <laughs> um, Jeremy, Jeremy, you've turned 24 today. And I know this because your partner Marley wrote to us and, and said you'd appreciate a shout out. Kevin has turned 55 today. And I know this because his favourite and indeed only son, Michael, wrote to us and requested a shout out. Maddie over there in Rochester, New York, has turned 28 today. Maddie got her PhD last um, autumn. And I know I know Maddie's name because I sometimes read it out on our Patreon rewards. Maddie is clearly a very good solver, even though she was very modest in her uh, her email. And she's hosting a potluck picnic today. So she she's only going to get chocolate cake if somebody brings along a chocolate cake to the potluck picnic. I've never heard of a potluck picnic. That's a lovely idea. Um, but Maddie, I hope I hope you have a great birthday and I hope somebody brings you the cake. Um, and then little Lana has turned six today. I think I read you out your birthday last year, Lana, when you turned five. And I know this because your mum, Samilla, over there in Sydney, Australia, wrote to us. And Lana, thank you for watching us. Um, and I hope that you enjoy, I hope you enjoy it. Um, and then finally, I'd like to wish the very, very best today. I think actually, I think because this, this video will go live on Friday, uh, Australian time, but Andrew and Paula um, are expecting the birth of their child today. Um, and I mean, this is, this is, this episode has got s sad, sad, things running through it um, but their first baby Theo was still born at full term um, I think a year ago and I can I cannot imagine what that must be like um, but the two of you are expecting expecting a baby uh, today and I hope that goes fantastically well and um, Andrew thank you for the email um, clearly absolutely bowled over with 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 Paula and <laughs> loves you very much 
and we wish you all the very best with um, with with the next few hours. Please send us a picture. Um, we would love to hear. We'd love to hear good news. Um, and is there anything else I need to talk about? I, I should actually. I should talk about. Um, it's a far more prosaic subject and I almost am embarrassed to mention it um, but we have got um, our patron reward for um, for June is coming out today at four o'clock so it will be out already do check it out it's the planet suite um, and and also all of the videos for last month's reward if you got stuck on any of the demono puzzles they're they're out as well on patreon so check those out Anyway, with all that said and done, let us return to the subject that this video is really about, which is Jack Lance and a puzzle that has been praised to the nines. Build your own star battle. And if you're used, if you know the rules of star battle, um, you'll be, you'll already know what to do here. But the, these are the rules. Place exactly two stars into every row, column and region. Stars cannot touch one another, even diagonally. Um, so if we put a star here, how, how, what are we going to use for stars today? We might use, uh, can I use, oh yeah, I can, I can maybe make circles. So imagine that was a star. Well, then you couldn't put a star in any of these cells because they all touch this, this star diagonally. They touch the cell that stars in diagonally and that's not allowed. Um, and solvers must determine the regions themselves. Some region borders have already been given. So this is a sort of, normally in a star battle, you're given the regions, but Jack doesn't give us the regions. We're gonna to have to work them out, just subject to the rules that at the end of the day, how big is this grid? 10 by 10, I think, it looks square. So yeah, 10 by 10 grid, we're gonna to have to put two stars in every column, in every row, and in every region once we've built them. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I think what I'm going to do is to start up here. Because clearly this little region here needs to escape. Well, it needs to escape a little bit, doesn't it? Because, right, let's start with a little trick about star battles while it occurs to me as I draw that shape in. In Star Battle, one thing that can be useful to know is that in any 2x2 two two area, you can only put one star. And that's because of the rules about not being able to touch, have stars touch each other. Obviously, if this was a star, you couldn't put a star here. So it, it helps sometimes visually to divide, um, divide the grid up into 2x2s two as you're looking at it. So in fact, in this area here, there's still not enough for the two stars in the green area. But... This cell is most certainly not green, is it? Because it's divided from green by a border. So that is going to be a forced region. Now the green, which has to grow a bit larger to get to a size where it can take two stars, um, does something like that. You see, we're going to be able to fill in quite a lot, I think, of quite a lot of cells. This cell as well, I mean, that's got to get out this has got to get out we're going to use a full palette of colors today um i'll use gray now uh light green maybe so uh, that's because each one of these cells obviously it has to get out in order to in order to cover enough area to allow us to put two stars into the region now let's do the same thing down here so oh, i haven't used purple yet that's a, that's an oversight and now I'm going to get into trouble. I'm going to have to start reusing colors, I think. Wow. Um, or maybe I'll go, I'll go light green on the basis it's unlikely those two are going to meet up. Right. So this purple has to grow a bit more, doesn't it? And this, right. And this blue has to grow a bit more. And that's rather interesting because now, now the green is penned in. So I can put the stars into the green. We've discovered a region. Hang on, let's go. Let's go and outline the region we've discovered and put stars in it. That's going to have to be a star because remember we said you can only put one star in every two by two. So this area can have one star in it. So that must have a star. And then you can't put stars in any of these cells. So that must be a star. And now you can't put a star here. 
and we've made a right mess. <laughs> we made a right mess of the puzzle in terms of how it looks with these X's, but... Oh, okay, so... It... Ah, oh, I see. Right, hang on. I thought, I thought I'd immediately broken the puzzle, but I don't think I have. That cell clearly has to be yellow. Yellow's got no stars in it yet. So yellow has to grow. But in doing that, yellow has penned in blue... But blue hasn't got the opportunity to have two stars in it. It could only, ha only have one star. So in fact, blue, which has to therefore grow and get bigger, blue and yellow are the same, which is interesting. So bl the blue area has now grown. This red area needs to get bigger. It's still not, it's still not a, at least the minimum size. The minimum size would be three cells, and we have a star there and a star there. Um, that grey's got to get bigger. I almost said that this cell had to grow, but that's not true, is it? Because if this did have two stars, that would be plenty big enough for the red. Um, oh, okay, but the, the blue has to get bigger again, because it's only got one star in it at maximum. So the blue gets bigger, and now we're penning in the purple. I've broke. I've broken it again. <laughs> I keep thinking because I'm wondering. I'm worried about this now. So if I make that orange, this region. Oh no. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Right. This has got to be. This has obviously got to still be green. That's penned in purple. So purple is a is a very tiny region. And that's got to have two stars in it, which we can place. And that's going to allow us to X out loads of stuff around the two. Oh, well, oh, hang on. There's another thing I've just noticed. Yes, I've now got two stars in column one. So we can, we can pencil mark or X out the whole of the rest of column one and column three. So that might help us if we come and have a look at the bottom of the grid in a moment. But I've also got a great deal of a great deal of blue, which is unstarred. Um, hmm, oh dear, am I about to get very badly stuck? I fear that might be the case. Oh, I've got <laughs> I've got two stars in row four. That might help. Let's, let's fill in the rest of row four with X's. Okay, so if this does grow, it's not picking up a cell so it could take a star from. I don't know. Maybe we've got to do some colouring at the bottom. Let's try... So let's, let's label those two cells red. I'm not saying these are the same as these. I'm, I'm very much not saying that. I'm just trying to colour some of this bottom area in. Yellow, I've not I've not used yellow. Oh, I think I did use yellow and then yellow became blue. Um, so why don't we make this blue? And why don't we make this grey? Probably isn't going to meet that. And then we could make this fluorescent green again, my favourite colour. Right, okay, so there's some things we can do here. Um, this red thing hasn't got any stars in it, so it's got to grow to there. And then the yellow thing has to grow, because it... Well, the yellow thing doesn't have to grow any more than that, though. The blue thing has to grow. The grey thing has to grow. Right, this red is not big enough, because it's got no stars in it. So it's got to go... Well, it's got to go... Well, it's got to do a lot of things. It's got to go to here, which means it is different from orange. And by going to here, it pens in yellow. So yellow has become a region, which means we can put two stars into it, which means we've done all the stars in column two now. Oh, so <laughs> I keep thinking I've broken it because you keep I keep getting different colours meeting each other. But look, this blue has got no stars in it, so it's got to come to at least here, whereupon it appears to have penned in red um, with no stars. But of course what I could do and what I'm going to do is to turn blue into red and now I've got a great big, I've got a bigger region which 
still has no stars in it, but at least it's not a broken region in the sense that this red can still grow, which that red couldn't. So now, now that's got to be orange because we know red and orange are different because of this border. Orange has to grow again, doesn't it? Now green has to go grow again. I'm conscious that green and blue might be able to be the same. Red, red is different from grey, so red has to grow again. Ah, this is where it's going to get tricky, isn't it? So now, well, ooh, okay, here is a little trick we can do with star battles. If we look at down column four, the first five cells of column four contain no stars. So I need to put two stars into this five cell sequence. And that means this cell can't be a star because if this was a star, it would rule those three out from being stars. And I'd only have a domino to put two stars in and we know that doesn't work. So I can do, a, oopsie, I can do no star here and no star here. So green has to, well, green, but green could grow to the right. Hmm. Okay, so what we're going to have to do here is... <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to say... Does this grey grow? Mary Mary, quite contrary, how does your grey region grow? If it did grow, it would be really interesting because this is clearly not fluorescent green. But I don't... Th mm. The fact is we've got every region we have found so far has been tiny. Oh, I know what it'll be. Right, hang on. How many... Um, well, there are 10 rows to this puzzle. So there are 20 stars to put in, and that means there are 10 regions because we're putting two stars in every region. I've already got three regions. And how many of these? One, two, three, four, five. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five. Just pick up the top left hand cell of each one. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. I've already got 12 regions, so some of these regions have to join up. There cannot be 12 regions in this puzzle. Oh, but I said that the light green could connect to the blue. Uh, what is it then? It's going to be... Two by two. Two and two. Yeah, two by twos. Okay, let's have a look at two by twos in row five and row six, look. Because we know in row five and row six, there are going to be a total of four stars. But one, two, three, four. Given I can't put more than one star in each of those two by twos, that cell has to be a star. There we go. And that is in, uh, that's in, the, oh, hang on, I want to put a star star right there we go so we get those and i think we can go further than that because well this whole area now is surely under massive pressure isn't it in the sense that yeah uh how can i do this i mean that's that's a two by two where i could put one star that's where i could put a second star so there must be a star in this domino um, I don't really know how to show that. There's a star there. That's how I'll do it. So there's no star in either of those because a star in either of these would stop this line having a star in it. And then, they can, so there now must be a star here. So again, so now we've managed to divide up row five and six. And we know each of these, dom each of these lines contains one star. But, okay, we can slightly, oh, actually, is that going to be, make things confusing? I think we can, I can run exactly that analysis as well on row six and seven, can't I? I've got one star, so there's going to be a star there, a star here, and a star here. So one of these two cells is a star, which means that's not a star, that's not a star. 
I don't quite know how to show this though because maybe I'll do that. I'm not saying that there are two stars in this region because there could be So I'm not saying that the black and the and the and the purple line are two stars. There's at least I suppose I'm saying there's at least one star in that string. Right. So now what do we know, if anything, about the world? Oh, I know something I know that I didn't know before. This grey region can't be finished. Because before I was thinking this grey region was going to be like this region and have two stars in it, but now there's a star here. So this, this has only got a maximum of one star in it. In fact, it does have exactly one star in it, and we know I know what I'm going to do to indicate that. There must be a star in one of those cells to complete column four. But that means grey has to grow. And if grey has to grow, because we know grey and red are different, then green, which does only have one star there, green must grow. And if green must grow, what's this region now? Let's make this one purple. So purple has got to get out to at least here. There can only be one star in those two cells, so green has to grow again. And now what's going on? Red. Red, red has to grow again. Oh, I see. This is good. This is good. Red has to grow again because red's got no stars in it. Yeah, that must be right. So red grows to there. That pens in grey. So grey has to take a star here. Whoopsie, let's go to... That's a star. Now neither of these can be stars and that's a star. Get rid of the line. Put in a load of X's around all this. Green has got no stars in it yet. Oh, uh, row 8 is that? Has got, two, um, has got two stars. So we can star out the rest of this. We can star out the rest of row 10. We've got two stars already. So there's a star here and a star here in row 9. Right, now. Ah, I see. And now look at... I mean, let, I mean let's just pause, because I, I sort of say I see, and I do see. But this is stunning, isn't it? This, I mean, imagine trying to construct this. I've got no idea how you'd go about that. That is completely and utterly beyond my ken. I mean, anyway, I've noticed this red. This red has got now a maximum of one star in it because there's a, a star here present, preventing this from being a two star sequence. So red has to grow. But if red grows, it's pushing blue into green where well, these must be the same because blue's got no stars in it. So this allows that. Now, blue is different from orange. Orange must grow. And blue must grow because it's not got any stars in it. And blue must continue to grow because it's still got no stars in it. And orange must go grow because it needs another star. And red must grow because it's got no stars in it. But red could be the same as green. Oh, my goodness. Um, right. Oh, didn't we? Ah, we, we worked out. Look, look at the little purple line here. There was a star in one of those two cells. So this is the star now, which means that's so we can get rid of the lines. Now this is huge because now I can X out that and X out that which means that's a star, and that's a star, and that's a star, and that's a star. So those lines did actually um, did actually sort of work, didn't they? Now I can X out the whole of these columns, which have got the two stars in. These lines at the bottom allocate stars to me as well. I'm not, I'm not far off having done all the stars, but I haven't done any of the regions. Um, all right, what is going on? Okay, so the, the red region at the top 
it has to have a star in one of those cells because otherwise column five is broken but it still needs to grow because it hasn't only it's only got one star in it so that means blue grows ah now orange doesn't have to grow because orange has achieved its starage it is quarate on stars red we oh, see I was about to put red there but if red and green meet up then they could extend there instead so I think I've got to be a bit careful about that what about grey 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 this top bit of grey can ha must have one star but it can only have one star so grey must grow to here which means green which is different from grey has to go there and this cell which is uncolored I'll make it yellow although it's a bit too similar to green potentially we could no let's change green to purple and then it's clear so this cell that's got to grow and these can't be stars so this region must come to here to get out of this little pea pentomino otherwise there's not enough room for yellow to have two stars in it so that pens in those two cells which must be yellow and yellow must continue to grow <laughs> so it's, i mean this is just lovely now purple has got a mac well purple has got exactly one star here so purple needs to grow gray oh great could gray stop there ah no hang on i've just made a mistake as well i've just seen an error so i said purple had to have one star there that's not true if that's a star in gray golly gosh okay so it's still true to say purple has to grow, but it's not true to say that, that, is, that this necessarily has a star in it. Um, wow, okay. Red, red still hasn't worked. Red still not got enough stars, so red goes there. And that pens in grey. So, okay, so grey gray must have a star here, which X's out all of these cells, puts an a star here that takes care of those two cells completes row one look row one's now got all its stars this cell can't be a star by the touching rule this row is finished this is a star by i've done i've done it i've done it but i haven't done it if you see what i mean i've done all the stars i think how absolutely bad i've done all the stars but i haven't built the regions no i very much haven't built the regions actually either i'm looking at this now and like red is totally i've only got one star in red so red's got to grow i don't know if red and purple i've got to be careful as well not to have too many regions okay yes look look at the bottom of the grid it occurs to me now those two cells let's make those orange for a moment they're clearly in the same region that pushes purple up traps green with no stars in it so green and red are the same i'm actually going to make that that red region entirely green now because it pleases me now this green region has to grow it's got no stars in it the purple region has to grow this is amazing this has to grow because orange has got no stars orange is different from this cell so all those cells now become a new color oh i shouldn't have used red red's too red's too close to orange um let's use oh i could i could risk yellow and hope that no i'll, I'll go blue i was thinking would the yellow meet up with the yellow here but actually this this is suggesting that th that won't happen there's got to be another region that's not yellow there right so orange is coming out at least to here blue is picking up its first star there but must continue to grow oh purple has now got two stars by continuing to here and it could stop in fact green has to go there like, ah look that orange has now been framed this is absolutely unbelievable now i'm I, now i'm actually going to count how many regions have i got i've got one there two there three three here four here five here let's let's ring that one properly so i've got i've got quite a lot you know six here seven eight nine 
I mean, I've got way more colours than I'm meant to have. So, so there's there's got to be a lot of consolidation here. Oh, hang on. Let's just stop there before I... I was about... Well, you saw, I just did that. Is that true? That's not true, is it? Green and blue could be the same. Wow. Okay. I've got to be careful now. We've got to be very careful about which which things can link to which things. Well, yeah, in fact, look, that's a good point. Purple has got no stars in it, so it must link to red. And I think I'm going to make it red as well, because that's quite that looks quite pretty. Um, orange needs another another star, so it grows. Blue now blue now is quarate, so blue doesn't have to extend beyond this. Okay, so what on earth is going on? I've got to somehow amalgamate these regions. I've got one star that's unallocated. So this one, this one star. Yeah, I can see things that, oh, oh, I see. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I've seen one thing that's ludicrous that's possible, I think. I, th I think, I'm not so sure about this, but I'm just going to show you what I've seen. I think it might be, and if this would be comical if this is true, that this region joins up there, joins all of these, and joins all of that together. Some, something like that. That might indeed be correct, which would be absolutely unbelievable. Now, how do I prove how this works, though? Okay, so red has got one star it needs another star but it can't get it from yellow if red gets its one star from so okay so red's one star red's one star is being matched up either with this digit which is very possible or it's being matched up with orange but if we connect orange up to red without taking this then yellow can never get a second star. So that cannot work. So red must take this star, and that's its second star, but now blue has no star. So blue blue has become the same as green. So all of those, I think we've got to turn them I think we've got to turn them blue actually, because otherwise that is going to clash up there with the green. Blue still has no star. And blue is different from purple, so blue has to take this square, bumps into um, orange, which it now must become. Yeah, so, oh god, this is going to mess up all the colouring. But now, this, okay, so we need to change this colour. That's going to become green, because this is forced now to become blue. It uh, gets me one star in blue, and therefore, yeah, it is what I said, look. Because now the only star that blue can get is the yellow star, which means both of those must turn blue. All of yellow must turn blue. And this this cell is not blue by the border, so that can only be green. I don't believe it. Oh, that is just unbelievable. Oh my goodness me. Right, hang on. I, I want to... I just want to take stock. I want to count the regions I've put in as well. I mean, it feels, it felt good, didn't it? It felt like it was right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is seven. That's eight. The blue, the massive blue region is nine. And ten it won't let me write in. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to, we're going to have to cheat on a ten as Maverick flies past. Um... That is just sensational. I mean, uh, it. I, I don't. I'm not sure how to properly express my admiration for that puzzle. That is absolutely brilliant. It is quite clearly genius to be able to construct that. It, it is just. 
It's almost magical. It is almost magical that that has a unique solution and that it's findable so prettily and that you can keep combining the regions up together. What a loss. I, I, so that's Jack Lance taken from the world too young and what an what a, a absolute crying shame and um, I hope this video goes a tiny way um, uh, to paying tribute to a rem truly remarkable person um, I, I mean I don't think I mentioned in the introduction he was also an incredibly good games programmer he made loads and loads of computer games which were loved um just an, a remarkable remarkable guy um thank you very much for watching um let me know in the comments how you got on with the puzzle let me know if you have any memories of jack you'd like to share and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic